Kum Lenin of Lat Gemara. We are up to the Kuf Chaf Aluf Omel Aluf of Yeramis, the pen ultimate blot, the pen ultimate daf. And um, we're up to over here, Rabbi Yehuda ben Baba. Rabbi Yehuda said, and the question is if Rabbi Yehuda is coming, the Mishnah said here that up to three days you can recognize, but after three days you can't. And Rabbi Yehuda Baba says not all situations are the same. Is he trying to be lenient to say that sometimes it could be four, five, six days, or is he trying to be strict and saying three is a maximum, but sometimes it can only be one or two days? Says the Gemara. You both have a question. Rabbi Yehuda ben Baba is the four lines on the top. Is Lakula Pollock, the Lakula Pollock, is he being lenient to strict? Toshma, come here. Oh, Gabba, the person, the Toba, he drowned by Karmi. He drowned in, in, in Karmi, in a place called Karmi, Asku, I behead you. And then they brought him out to behead you, Labosa, Tulosa, Yemin. After three days, they, they took him out of the water and they saw him. And based on the, the recognition, the incident of and they relied on the on the fact that people recognized him, and they um, let his wife get married, even though it was a number of days later. Um, so another incident in the hookup, the person drowned in the school, they took him out and put him on the bridge of Shrista. The incident it was five days after the event, and yet they recognized the, the person and they said to the wife, Yes, you're now released. Now, I'm a bit like a local public who is being lenient that even after three days, if you can, you know, on occasions you can recognize that you love Gabriel and Baba, that these people rely on Gabriel and Baba. I'm the local public being stricter that sometimes it's less than three days. Inu Dabba Kaman, who are they following? I think you might have a little bit of a problem with Tom who said that if you recognize the whole body, it's even after three days, it's only talking about the head. It seems to be more here, we're talking about the full body, and still we're putting a time limit. And the Gemara, shiny Maya, water is different. The Tzamsi. In water, this rule of three days is just lying on land. But lying in water, it can be longer than three days because what the, the water does is it holds everything together. And therefore, it doesn't allow it, the body to swell and be bloated. But I'm, uh, what we just said before the Gemara yesterday, Maya, by, by the guy who has led amputated, Maya Marzamaka, the water actually exacerbates the, the, the wound. There's a wound, yes, the water makes it worse. But there's no wound, just full intact body. Mitzvah summits that actually protects the body, preserves the body. When do we say that what that water preserves the body? It could be even a week later, five days later. Machlink is restraining him in five days, means the maximum is five, or even after five days, doesn't matter how long they're in the water. When do we say that the Chioski, if you took it out of the water, you can still recognize it, Chazia Bishaita, or you saw it straight away. But if you take it out of the water, a short time later, the body bloats pretty much straight away. So we're talking about taking it out of the water and looking at it straight away and making that call. So the Mishnah, now we're going to make a distinction between Mayim Sheyesh Lehem Saif and Mayim Sheyesh Lehem Saif. Mayim Sheyesh Lehem Saif, the mother will define as water that you can see all the edges. So if anybody was there and, and it was able to come out, you would have seen because you can see all four sides. Mayim Sheyesh Lehem Saif is just beyond that. You cannot see. So just because you saw a person, a ship capsized and a person disappear under the water, doesn't mean that it wasn't able to swim across and come out the other side, catch a board or something. And you don't know. So Mayim Sheyesh Lehem Saif, we're going to allow the testimony according to one opinion. Mayim Sheyesh Lehem Saif, we are not going to allow the testimony. You can, it's a probability, but it's not good enough. You need 100%. That's the Gemara, Mishnah, not full of the Mayim. So the first time holds, Ben Sheyesh Lehem Saif, Ben Sheyesh Lehem Saif, Ishta, so in all cases, the wife is also, because he can't even, even water that has a limit, you cannot guarantee that the person didn't, didn't we'll see later what the case is, that the person died. I'm going to make it amazing. I'll approve you. My Sebech, there's a story of the person should not follow, but it goes home to a large pit, but all of the Achash Lehem and came out after three days. Now, it's not clear whether the guy was actually under the water for three days, which is nigh impossible, or whether he was just in the water for three days and his head might be bobbing above the water. But but um, we say that there's a limited time the person has the strength to stay above water. My Sebech was a story with a, with a, with a blind person. She yodded to the Mai. They went to, to go to the Mikveh in a cave. The person who was leading him followed him afterwards. <clears throat> Found afterwards, the show and we waited until long enough that anybody can actually survive that. We see the shame, and then they said, You know what? Both the wives are able to get be married. So, mayor says he has a story supporting his view that a person can survive in the water for a couple of days. And Rabbi Yezi says, 
that no, it's a very limited time that a person can survive, and then we released the, the wives based on that. The Shumai says a story about Asya in a place called Asya. The Echa, we already had it before, Shishululiyam, they lowered him into the water, and then, you know, he was tied to, like inside a cave, tied to a rope. But also the other one, they pulled him back out. El Ravle, only his foot came out. And the Chami, Minu Kupens, Minu Kubala, Maila, above the knee, Tanase, definitely he died. Minu Kubala, Mata, below the knee, late Tanase. He shouldn't uh, get remarried uh, because we don't know he might have survived. He might have survived. Now, all that I'm say is talking about that you tied, the, the, the person was tied to the rope. So therefore, it's for sure that this foot is part of that person. But if, let's say, a person jumped in the water, then later you found only a foot, you don't really know if that person's foot or not, so you can't release her, even if it's above the knee. Says the mother. Uh, <clears throat> so Rabbi Yaisi was talking about a cave. A cave is a Mayim Sheyesh Lahem Saif. A cave is not a very big area. And Rabbi Yaisi is saying in a Mayim Sheyesh Lahem Saif, we can testify we don't see him coming out the other end because, uh, and you can, and so he argues, first of all, he makes a distinction between Mayim Sheyesh Lahem Saif and Mayim Sheyesh Lahem Saif. And the second thing is um, that that uh, um, he holds that there's a limited time that a person can survive in water, not like a mayor says three days. And so, second of all, I've learned another my mayor is very general. So, if each test of a mayor holds makes no difference any water, the woman is also, you can't say for sure that the person died. The Chama Chama say, my in she yes, I'm sorry, you should test. The Chama say, water that has a soy, the wife is mutter. Then, no, if, the, if you can see the other side, the wife is mutter because if she would have, if the person would have survived, you would have seen him come out. But any, any of the four sides of the Sha'inlam side, if it's endless water, then the wife is also, you cannot testify that he died. <coughs> <coughs> What's the definition of water that has an end? I'm going to buy you a kosher standing. Let's say the cave is full of water. You can see uh, somebody fall in. You can see if it comes out any of the four sides, you can see him coming out. Then uh, you can um, then you can say the person definitely died after wait a certain amount of time that he couldn't have survived. But um, if you cannot see all four sides, that's called a mayim she'en lehem say. Who got the person? The Togva, he drowned by Agma de Simki, he drowned um, in, in this lake or this, um, you know, this sea in this place called Simki. Answer of Shelah, Risa of Shelah, married off his wife. Now, this water here was Mayim England, so it was quite a large lake. You couldn't see the other side. And yet, he, he decided to allow her to accept, be set free. Now, this is a question because this is a Mayim She'en Lehem Saif. And everyone agrees, Mayim She'en Lehem Saif, you can't just let the woman go. We got to put up Shayla in Cherim. We have to put him in Cherim. You know, it's a big Amor, we put him in Cherim because he passed it against Allah. Amalei, the Shul said, one second. Before we put him in Cherim, let's find out what was behind this. Let's first send him, send him and ask him to defend himself. Shol Cholei, he sent him the following message. Asking Allah, Mayim, tell us, what do you think the Allah is? Mayim She'en Lehem Saif, endless water. Somebody said we saw him, we saw him fall into the into, into the ocean. We couldn't see the other side. Would you say his wife is permitted or not? Shalom, he said back, the wife is usher. Then the next question I asked him is, tell us. So no, you agree, it's awesome. Tell us. But this this little um, this little sea, this little lake or sea. Mayim she is like it's a marsh. Mayim she lahem saif. Oh, imagine so. How do you consider that? Is that endless water or not? Shalaklu, he said, surely, Mayim She'en Lehem Saif. I can't see the other side, so it's Mayim She'en Lehem Saif. Umar, my time over, Achi, so why in the world did you release his wife when they told you that somebody fell in there? So he said, Mitatin, I made a mistake. And also, I thought, Kivun the Kogu, the Kaimu, I thought because the water has no waves, it's still water, it's like a marsh, swamp, as it's still waters, it's Kemayim She'esh Lehem Saif. I mean, I thought you know, if he would go out of the water, he wouldn't have to go to the other side. Where you can't see anymore because how, how would he get there? There's no currents or anything, no rapids. So I was sure that he'd have to come out where he is. And therefore, this is like Mayim that has an end because he couldn't have made it to the other side. That would have thought. The law, which I'm wrong. Even the Ica Gully, even since even though there are slight currents, the wind can blow and, and make a slight current. So I could have said that it's possible that these currents did carry him to the other side. And I just didn't see him walk out. So I made a mistake. So as a result of that, they didn't put him in Chelim, obviously, because he made a mistake. Cody, we're right in the middle of the page, Kufchof, Aleph, and Aleph, and we're discussing the difference between, right now, not like Ramey, but like him, they see the difference between, or the Braise here, between Mayim, Sheyesh, Lem, Saif, 
and mayim and the chachamim say mayim she ain't no sex. There's endless water. You cannot testify the husband died. Who knows? Maybe it came out the other side. If the water has an end and, and you can see all sides and nothing, nobody came out, you can testify. Kodesh Shmuel said about Rab. Shmuel said about Rab. Lo you unu the tzaddik kolav. Tzaddikim don't make mistakes. You see, by but because we spoke to him, you avoided putting someone ahead of him. Who, you would have been unjustified and you would have done the wrong thing. Kodesh Rab said Shmuel. Rab said about Shmuel. But Shua the Rav Yaitz. The best thing to be to go on the right path is consult, and uh, and therefore we did the right thing by consulting, and we realized that he uh, by me asking Shmuel, you know, Rab was giving himself praise. The best thing I did was I, I consult before I put him a chalim. I asked you, what do you think? If I wouldn't have asked you, I would have done it. I would have done the wrong thing. Time we learned. Oh, but every mice, maybe other little two people, mechmori, mechmori, and they used to put out nets to catch fish. I guess they used to go into the water as well. And what happened was they used to the fish dig out like holes under in, in the ocean, under the not on the seabed, but like under the sand. And um, and what happens is it seems that sometimes they, they, the school of fish can come and, and eat up the whole, whole section. And there the water doesn't go to the top. The water, let's say, covers three quarters of it. And if you go there, you can always raise your head and breathe the air in and then go back under the water. So you can survive there for a much longer time. So one of them went into these one of these places where the fish hide out. The shock of Hamas suddenly became dark. Couldn't see his way out. His friend was standing there by the sea, was waiting for him to come out and nothing. And he, so he waited for how long a person can normally survive under the water. And you know, too long. And that's why it's very difficult to a mayor that he can survive underwater three days. So when he says survive underwater three days, doesn't really mean being underwater the whole time. It means that you keep on putting your head up. And, and breathing in and then going down again. How long can a person have strength to do that? Anyway, Uba, he came, Uba, he came home and he told everybody, your husband was, you know, I think uh, he died. The Mocha, the following day, the sun came out, the guy who was trapped over there in that little hole of the Michil of Dogim, uh, saw the exit, Uba, and he came out, Uba, he came home, and guess what he found? Hesped God was very It was a big Levi for him, and they were saying number of eulogies for him, the Machaya. And Omar Rebbe came up to him. How wonderful it was! The Chum and Shomer said, "My and she has some service from Teres. If the water has an, a safe, the wife is mutzik because he could testify that he died. I wish Einlam safe. If there's no end, each day as soon as she's forbidden. <clears throat> and look what happened right here. It was right here. Here was a, a Mayim she Einlam safe, and they thought that he died, but actually he didn't. Says the Gemara, if the whole thing is because not because the Mayim has no end, it's because there's like a you know, cavities there near the water that a person can sort of survive, then what's the difference if it's a Mayim She'en Lehem Saif or a Mayim She'esh Lehem Saif? A person can find areas where there's uh, pockets of air and survive there. So even Mayim She'esh Lehem Saif, how can you just testify he's dead? Maybe he's under the water, but he found one of these pockets of air. Then Chilo Shodogim, more answers, but Mayim She'esh Lehem Saif, water which has uh, the finite, Mechilo Shodogim, it's not common to find these Mechilo Shodogim. They only do it out in the Sea in open sea. So the Gemara, I'm a Rashi. You heard of Rabbi? This will have Rabbi say. My in Shein Lam Saif is just so that it's forbidden. Hani mili be in the Alma. That's talking about an ordinary person because maybe he went to the other side. It just disappeared. I will turn to Rabbi. He's a Rabbi. Wherever he goes, people will know who recognize him, and therefore I know because he decided to call Yisle. Everyone will find out and say, "Oh, what a great Rabbi he is!" And then word will come back, and we'll know that he's alive. So if it's a Rabbi, even my in Shein Lam Saif, after a certain amount of time, we can assume. That the person is um, is no longer around us. It's not so. Makes no difference. The evidin the chatzil This is very important. This whole din that we say that if a, if a ship capsizes and so on and so forth, that you're not allowed to get that uh, you're not allowed to get married because we don't really have t- clear testimony is only the chatzil. They come to a rabbi, they ask. But if they already got married, we're not going to tell them to leave because no probability the person is dead. In all likelihood, the person is dead. In fact, I was going to tell you last time, Chlul Shirim says, you know, what exactly does it mean? He says, he, the Gemara will tell some stories how, how uh, it survived in Mayim Shalem and Saif, and so it is. Halacha makes Metzius. Not the other way around. Halacha doesn't reflect the Metzius. The Eibosh, the Estakol Barais, the Bar Alma, Hashem used the Torah and he created the world. So therefore, Torah creates the, the, the facts, not the facts, the Torah reflects the facts. For example, we say that a girl under three years old, her psulum come back. It doesn't make a difference if it's a leap year or not a leap year. It's always the same. That's the halacha creates the metzies, as the Shalmi says. So the, the Chedushim said, if the rabbis were to paskin that water which is endless, Mayim you can go home and testify, then any person who, uh, who ended up somewhere in the sea and fell off a ship, 
will definitely die because halacha creates a matthias. But by the rabbis coming along and saying that, no, it's not 100% the person is dead, there's a possibility he can survive. Therefore, it enabled all of these stories and people who can survive, uh, you know, ships that capsized, why can it survive? Because the, the Torah said, halacha said, that it could be. And because the Torah said, it can, you can survive, therefore people can survive. So that's what Moses says, how great are the words of the Chacham, because they made it happen. That's why we can have all these stories where ships capsize and people survive. There's always survivors. Ferries capsize and there are survivors. Why? Because the halacha said that that's how it's going to be. Tanya will learn. Anyway, so this, this, this whole din is the chathil, but yeah, but if she did get married, in all probability the person did die, we're not going to tell her to get out of that marriage. <clears throat> I saw a boat, a ship capsized, and I knew there was a tamachachma on that ship, and I really felt bad. Umane, who was that? Rabbi Akiva, who Kashalisi, Bir Yabosh, I came to the dry land, but suddenly he came along, Rabbi Akiva, the Yashas, and he sat there and he argued with me and I said, Amakula, how did you get here? I found the board floating from the remains of my ship. The whole galva 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 then Nate Larisha, I bowed down my head, so the wave went right over my head. And that's how I survived. The Kadamacham Nacham said, Im ye boy the Shemalodum, if any time a Russia comes and antagonizes you or threatens you, you nanea Larisha, don't antagonize them back, just bow your head down and let them say whatever they want and move on. Same thing here, like I mean, there's this analogy, analogy but it's just like um, the wave went over his head, didn't threaten him, so too, if somebody bothers you, just let him go over your head, don't worry about it. Amarki, I said, This is the words of Chushu to mute. How great are the words of Chamim Shomru that said, Because they said that did, that because it could be alive, that's where Akiva survived. Tanya, the other Akiva, Pamar Akiva said the same story about himself. Pamar Akiva once said, He's in Mahalaku traveling between the ship, and he says, You know, I saw another ship capsizing, and I heard there's a Tamachok, and then I really felt. Terrible man at a mayor, Kishalis and Dinas Kupitkaya. When I came to the nation for Kupitkaya, the Mara mentioned a number of times regarding, you know, the a get and the value of money. You have to give talk to my exodus. But the Yashiv Vidon, the Fana Bahalach, and he sat, came suddenly, he came, appeared, and he sat before me and he argued. And, and we learned that he was a Talmud of a Kiv, he was a Talmud of a Shmuel and a Talmud of a Kiv. And we just had an argument with the Gemara there who was first and who was second, uh, who was the first teacher, who was the second teacher. Beni, my son, Mihelech, how did you survive? Amal, he said, Gal Tardain the Chavedi. One wave threw me to the next. The Chavedi the Chavedi. And then the next wave threw me to the next wave. And Shekiani the Yabasha. Till eventually they tossed me over to the dry land. Amarti again, I said, Therefore, I may survive also. Third, we learned. Not for the good If you fell into a, a lion's den, you can't say automatically you die because. Lions, if they're not hungry, they're not going to attack you. The chafur de malei nechosh are talking, but if you came into a, a, a pit full of snakes and scorpions, me eating love, definitely they bit you and you die. And this person died. I've heard him say that I met afach de malei nechosh are talking, me eating love. Even that, you can't say for sure he died. Because chashin is possible. Shema chabru. Maybe this person knows how to do all kinds of incantations and chants, and somehow or another it stymies uh, the, the movement of these uh, snakes and scorpions. Um, the Tanakama, Tanakama says, even if it's true, I'm not sure what the most question of Tanakam is. How many people know uh, are a Chava that know these things? And, and if, if, even if the Chava knows these things, you can find out straight away if this person was a Chava or not. But anyway, Tanakam says, Agav, it's a mask. No, even if you know these incantations, if, you, if because it's crowded, a lot of snakes there, if you're standing and you're press them on one of the snake's heads, they're going to bite you regardless. So therefore, uh, but a uh, but usually there's plenty of room, there's ample room there, and you're not standing on them, and as long as they're not hungry, they leave you alone. So what we learned. You fell into a fiery furnace, you can say for sure the person did not survive. If you fell into a yard, into a hot pot, full of wine and oil, you can testify that the person definitely died. He's cooking in hot oil or hot wine. I agree with you, I grant you, when it comes to a hot pot of oil, yes, because even the oil spills out, it lands on fire, makes the fire even stronger. Because it, it increases the heat of the fire and the fire itself. If it's wine, it jumped, if he fell in, then the wine pours out, and the wine pouring out will extinguish the fire, and of course it will burn himself, but it won't die. Amy Eden, love, you cannot testify, he died in the because it extinguishes. Um, they said, you're right, initially it burns out, but like water, you put a little bit of water on a piece of wood, initially it sort of burns part of it out, but then the, the fire comes back with, with a, a ferocity much worse than before. 
So on the contrary, Tasia brings us a third opinion in the Gemara, a different version, but anyway, <clears throat> bottom line is that um, you can't really survive these things. Somebody, a man says somebody fell into his large pit and he survived for a few days. It's a puzzle. You're telling us a unique story, which obviously if it happened, it's, it's miraculous. So you can't bring any rayas from miraculous stories. It's not the way it works. Um, uh, and why is it Mycenaeism? Not just because um, you know, a person cannot survive the world three days, because there are other issues as well. And those issues definitely are impossible to survive unless there's a nest. What is that? My Mycenaeism, what exactly are we talking about? He didn't eat for three days. It says that it's it's clearly Esther said to eat and fast for me three days and three nights. It's a yum even though he's had some pain. So she said, what, fast me for three days. So clearly, that uh, what? Uh, you could survive three days. The woman goes to the beautiful shot. It says, I want you all to fast three days and three nights. And then she says, Gam ani say, I and my maids is, um, Gam Cain. We will fast the same. Cain is Gematra 70. Because the Gemara says, if you fast 72 hours, you have a terrible breath. And she's about to enter the, um, into the royal chamber. So she said to them, you guys fast 72 hours. You have no concerns. I will only fast Cain 70 hours, so I don't have the bad breath, so I won't in any way um, hurt them. Anyway, the big machlek is impossible whether they fast attack of three consecutive days or they fast in alternative days. From here, the clearly, it says they fast three consecutive days. Ella deloy nayim. The problem is he didn't sleep. If a person sleeps for sure, I will not sleep for three days. You know it's impossible to, to abide. Therefore, you give him alcohol straight away. But you're allowed to go to sleep straight away. There's a court case in New York about a, a, a person sleeping in New York, the port, the port Authority, because the trains were right next to his apartment. And, uh, and he said he couldn't sleep for a week. And, uh, and, and therefore, and it, it affected him and so on and so forth. So the lawyer representing the Port Authority brought to this Gemara here to say it's impossible that a person doesn't sleep for three consecutive days. If you say you didn't sleep for a week, it never happened. And the basis for that is this Gemara right here. It's impossible for a person to go be without sleep for three days. So how can he survive this pit without sleeping? So the Gemara, um, but I may, I may, my time is, how's I going to explain that? I mean, it's miraculous. So what do you bring that eye from the whole story? Omar Khan kind of said, keep in Al-Gabbe, keep in Habit. There was, you know, in, in the, inside this pit that he fell into, there was like, um, which is a section of the wall sticking out, like one layer on top of another layer. And therefore, he was able to lie down and sleep there. Um, I guess maybe his head out of the water. But Abanan, for those who learned that actually means underwater, which I don't know how it's possible, those are underwater, it means that, it's, yeah, under the water, they have slept anywhere on those, on those ridges of sticking out of this, in the wall. Abanan, the shisha, it was a flat wall, it was marble, it's impossible to lie down. So he actually masked the nine portraits, it's impossible that he couldn't um, somehow or another lead, even, you know, if it's all flat and marble, you have to stand. And the person cannot keep standing. So he says, it's a, it's a, the mayor says, no, it's inevitable. You're very tired. You can even lean and hold on to something and you can uh, sleep as well. We had the Gemara Sukkah in Sukha Beit Sheva. I think we were up the whole time, but they all put their heads on the shoulder of the next guy and he slept a little bit. So they were standing, but they were able to sleep. Like they put the, the head on the shoulder and then they were sleeping a little bit. So what we learned. There was a story with a person known as Nechunya, the one who dug the pits. And this guy was an unbelievable tzaddik. He went voluntarily and dug wells everywhere. So the people who are making the trek to the shrine three times a year will have water that they can uh, drink. So, so he went out of his way, gratis. He built all of these wells to help people quench the thirst. And there's a story with his daughter. She but a got Kate fell into one of these big pits that her father dug out as a tzedakah. <laughs> was also a big tzaddik and also he did Ruch and he did miracle himself. In the first hour, they told him that look, she fell into a pit and we don't know if she survived. Everything's all right. She'll live. In the second hour, she said, Yeah, don't worry about it. She'll live. Shlishi, the third hour, we know it's impossible to survive. He said, he said, Also, she must have came out of the she She survived. She doesn't came out. Because after three hours, it seems from here that three hours is the maximum you can survive in the water. And after that, you would not survive. And then Amalem, he said, also, she definitely went out. And then they found her. They asked her, how did you come out? Amalem, she said, I met this goat. I don't know. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, appeared this uh, goat. The Zokamaniga, this old man, was leading it. <clears throat> and um, 
and they took me out. The ram, this this ram, um, and this old man took me out. And this Sarachi so says that this ram was the ram of Yitzchak, and the old man was Avram. Avram and Yitzchak saved her. Why Punt Avram and Yitzchak? I'm not sure. So the Gemara says, <clears throat> so they said to him, Amalai Novi, you're not say you're a Novi. How did you know she won't die? Amalai said to him, Novi, Novi, I'm not the son of a Novi, I'm not the son of a Novi, I'm not the son of a Novi, I'm not the son Something that Tzadik himself is so occupied that he's built, making holes. In his own hole, Yechoshua Bazadi, his children should die in that very hole that he's building for Zaka, impossible. But nevertheless, ironically, his own son died from thirst. But, but the difference was by the daughter, it, she, she fell into the pit that he himself dug. And that's too far. But the son died from thirst. And why did the son get punished from that? The son of the Chudia Shaykhaifa Shaykh. And why did he get punished for that? Because it says the sweep of this Aramoid surrounding him were very strong winds. Malamid, we learn from there, Kurish Borhu Midaktik him sweep of Kihuta Sida, that those people are very close to him. The Abish is very particular, and he even on a hair, if they deviate, the Abish punishes them. And this is so that they can go straight to Ganadin. So therefore, this son, his own son was punished that he died from thirst. Another passage saying the same thing. Kale Nadas with Say Kudashim, they've attacked attack Say Kudashim, Rabba the Naira Kosila. He's awesome. Around all those who are near him. So if you're near the Abish, you gotta be very careful. Because if you deviate even one here, Brad David should punish you now, so you can go straight to Ganit. Mishnah. What kind of testimony do we need, even if not real testimony? You heard this woman talking between herself, idle chat. Maze is plenty that they did you hear? That guy died, died, that's sufficient. You can come and say that's that the person is dead, and based on that, you can go ahead and get married. Because we also assume that the woman will do her homework. Rabbi Yudha says, I feel the Shabbat, I'm going to give your kids speaking. They said, we're going to Levaya, this is person. Now, um, we'll see whether it's an argument, whether is that Rabbi Yudha talking about kids, whether the kids intended to say as testimony, they're just time idle chatter, or, or in both cases, in the case of the women as well. They weren't, they, 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 it doesn't matter whether they were intending to say ages that this uh, person died or the style they were talking either way you believe them that you the bubble says be strong when it comes to yid even though they were tending to talk and say you know yankel died and they were telling telling people to know to notify them that is uh, doesn't matter when, when do we trust them if the intention was to say testimony we don't believe them but if some talking some chatter as we see lately mother then we do believe it. Says the Gemara, the Duma, Ozzy, these kids, all you heard them were saying, we're going to go to Levaya. But maybe maybe they never went to Levaya, maybe Levaya never even happened. I mean, much more, the Omni, what they said was, had any boy in, we're coming back, we're returning. We're returning from Levaya, and we've heard eulogies about this person. Says the Gemara, how do you know when kids talk? You think you understand kids talk? Maybe we're dealing with come to Baal Meshach, and maybe some ant uh, died, you know, a, a little bug died, and they gave it a name. And they said, oh, and they're making fun. Oh, they're mocking you. Oh, we went to the funeral of this and made eulogies. How do you know it's talking about real people? They called this worm or this ant or this grasshopper based on that name. The comedy, uh, you know how we know? Because they said, Cain became Rabbana Hassan. The following rabbis were at the Slavaya, what a Hashem person he was. And the Cain became Sabdani Havi Hassan. The following eulogizers were there. Once they do that, you know, they're not joking. If intended to give testimony, it's no good. When we say intend to give testimony, it's not just testimony. If he intended that with his testimony, she will be free and she can get remarried, then we don't trust him. But if he intended was to people to make people aware that their husband died, but he wasn't getting involved in whether she's not getting married, he's not interested, he's just telling us a story, then even then you, you do believe the guy. And, and the woman can get remarried. How do we know what his purpose is? I'm Rabbi Yisit. Bala Bezin. Look at his words. If he came to Bezin, Muhammad, each plane he made that person died. Hey, see his Ishtay. If he said that person died, then you'll will let the married the woman get married. Zehu Zehu is Kavan Lahativ. Sorry, I made a mistake. But Muhammad, if he said each plane he made that person died. Hey, see his Ishtay. Go ahead and let her get remarried. So clearly his intent was to release her. Then Zehu is Kavan Lahativ. His intention was to be mature. He can't rely on it. But may stop if he says that he died. Zevunus kavulaitis. If he says that the person died, nothing more. That's called his intention was aids. Even when we look at Rishlach, we show that kavul hati on him matter. Avon is kavul hoi. They do say it's good aids. On the other hand, when Kachoyim Aisa wasn't this a story? Be Oishia Berebi. 
wasn't this a story with Oisha Berebi? She hit him. She hit him. She hit him. She hit him. Rabbi Yechus, I disagree with you. I hold that any agents, even just to say agents, don't trust the guy. Wasn't well, the story with Oishia Berebi that he fought against 85 Zikanim, 85 of them? Amalami said, Loi Shanu. He said, Loi Shanu. He said that Oishia Rabbi said, Niskamala had that only the guy intended to release the woman. Abu Niskamala, he stopped to tell us what happened. They do say, hey, we trust him. They didn't agree with him at all. And the interesting, the number 85, because we looked at Moshav, it's called Kisve, that 85 letters is the minimum size of a safer Torah, and even so you honor there, the double noon, the letters in between, that if there's a fire on Shabbos, you save. No, it was as if he was fighting the whole Torah. Ella Maslis, the Bechon says, therefore, Maslis in the Tony, when our Mishnah says, if you had any intention, you know what it meant? The only time we trust the guy is if you stop talking. He wasn't intending to give any testimony, not only not to release it, but any testimony. Then we believe, for example, okay, we, we, the person that would come above was going around saying, is anybody here from the family of Bar Chavoy? Why is that? Because I want you to know that I think Chavoy died. So he wasn't going to court to some agency. He just wanted the family to know that uh, this man, Bechavoy, died. The Intsubar Abyesiv was visa. Based on that, went ahead and married, let, let the, allow the wife to get remarried. Who would have become of us? The guy was going around saying, Bible, the Pasha's visa. Um, uh, what was this person to be? He was a very strong person. The Havi Pubadisa, the Pubadisa, the Shachi, who died. And he was just walking around saying, Wow, well, terrible, terrible, awful news. This and this person died. They allowed her to get remarried again. He wasn't out to say Adis, he was just informing them of you know of news. They should uh, they shouldn't expect him to come back or something. I would have a comment about a little guy was going to say, Manika Be Khosa is anybody from the family of Khosa, Toba, Khosa, Khosa drowned. Omra Nachma, Nachma said, Alakim, I swear. Ochlu Kavri L Khosa, I swear that. A fish ate up this person, Chasa. He said that the guy drowned. And that's I swear that a fish ate up this Chasa, and uh, and therefore he is uh, he is free. <clears throat> Says the Gemara, um, um, which is what's it? With the Buddha Nachman, from based on the word of Nachman, by saying that a fish definitely ate uh, ate him up. Um, he didn't say, "Oh, I wish he can come out alive," or say a couple of him. He didn't say, "Let's say a couple of him, everything else." He just made a comment. Definitely, a fish ate him up. Then uh, the the of the incident. He, the wife of Chosav went ahead and what and remarried. And nobody said a word about it. Um, this is Mayim She'en Lehem Seif. So we learned before Mayim She'en Lehem Seif that you can't say for sure the husband died. So what happened here? So Rav says from here we see from this story. Hod Omer Abon. This is what the rabbi said, and she got remarried. Mayim she'en lam soif ishta asura. Hani mil lechatchila. Only if she went and asked the shaila, they would say you cannot get remarried. I will inosib, but if she did get married, they would not take her away. That's what happened here. She went and got married. Once she got married, nobody said anything to her because she already got married. But the evid, because no probability the person Taka didn't survive, and therefore it's all right. Igadami, others say. Not only she went ahead on her own and got married, and therefore you want to learn out the evidence, all right. And Nachman himself allowed her to get married. Omar, he said, Chosam, this is what Rahman said, Chosam, Gabriel Rabbi, Chosam is a great man. If he would have survived, Call the Isla Lemil, so everybody would have heard about it. So here, Amnachma said, even though it's Mayish Englem, so this is what the Murr had a half a minute for. If he's a great person that people know, and a great reputation, if he would have survived, we would have known about it, word would get back to us. However, the Murr discounts this version. The Lahid is not correct, we said for Lashna Gabra Rab, Lashna Lab Gabra, makes no difference who you are. It doesn't make a difference. Lechatchili, you cannot get remarried. Maybe he decided to disappear, or people didn't know who he was. The Yevid in Lechatchila, only if it's the Yevid, but not in the case of Lechatchila. Okay, we'll stop over here. Tomorrow we finish the Masechah.